Hey everybody, this is Politrite, and I wanted to make a quick video demonstrating a technique that I use a lot in game design uh, called logistic regression. Um, so a lot of the time when you are creating a progression-based game, let's use for example like a, like a classic JRPG turn-based combat, you hit the enemy, the enemy hits you back, you need to model out your health formulas, your damage formulas, maybe your experience to the next level, all of those kind of things. Um, and you're gonna want those things to be formula driven, but how do you get a formula that is going to match kind of what's in your head? Uh, because you probably have some idea of like how you want things to scale. Do you want things to scale uh, you know, from the single digits all the way up to like four or five digits, like a, like a Squaresoft or a Final Fantasy type of RPG experience? Or do you want to keep things uh, really tiny values, like in the Paper Mario series, where like if you do four damage in a hit, that's a ton of damage. Um, so as the designer, oftentimes you have some numbers kind of in your head. And so what we're going to do, we've got Google Sheets open, and we're just going to fill out some numbers. So first off, let's get some levels going. Um, we'll just go up to like level 10 for now. And we're going to model player health, player damage, enemy health, and enemy damage. All right, so let's say for player health, we want our players to start with 100 health, and we'll just make it go up. Really something quite simple. We'll do B2 plus 25. So each level, the player's gonna gain 25 health. Um, and that could come from multiple sources. You know, maybe 15 of it comes from their base health when they level up. And maybe 10 of it comes from different pieces of gear that they can equip that could give them a health bonus. So this is like a nice linear scale. Uh, it's not gonna be complicated to figure out a formula for that. In fact, the formula is gonna be 25 times x plus 75, where x is the level. Um, but for damage, maybe we want players to be playing with like much bigger numbers. So we will model out something a little bit different. We'll start them, we'll start them low, and we'll say um, C2. We'll add five base damage, and then multiply the total damage by 1.2. So just from level one to two, you're gonna see a big jump up in damage by 50%. And then throughout the rest of leveling, in fact, let's uh, fix our numbers real quick. I hate working with sheets when it's got decimals. Very annoying. There we go. Got those rounded off. So we're gonna scale from 20 damage all the way up to 228. Um, and then for enemy health, um, we're actually going to copy kind of that same formula. We'll start them at 45 health, which means it'll take three hits to kill the enemy at level one. Um, and then we will scale this kind of the same way. We'll do, oops, I need parentheses, D2 plus four base health times 1.2. So over here, damage scales plus five times 1.2. Now we've got plus four times 1.2, and we'll extrapolate that out. So immediately at level two, instead of killing an enemy in three hits, we're starting to kill them in two hits. And then later on, we're getting, uh, we're dealing like almost like two thirds or more of their health per hit. Um, and if you think about this in the context of like, you know, you're fighting maybe four enemies at once on the screen, and so you gotta kill a bunch of them, two hits per enemy probably makes decent amount of sense. And then for enemy damage, uh, we want that pretty closely linked with player health. And in fact, sometimes when I'm doing spreadsheets like this, I like to organize them like this because player health and enemy damage are like two sides of the same coin. And you, you wanna keep those things really tightly linked when you're doing your balance work um, so that you're not having runaway formula or runaway stat problems where you're getting unexpected behavior at, you know, different points in the progression. Uh, you want to keep these two things linked and, and by the same token, player damage and all the sources of stats and whatever that contribute to player damage, you want to keep that linked to enemy health because, uh, that's, that's really how the gameplay is going to feel in terms of how powerful your characters are, how qu quickly they can dispatch a given enemy. 
So just for simplicity, I'm going to drag this back, but I just wanted to make a quick note of that. So along those same lines, we're going to take actually the player's health and just divide it by 10. Because if this is a if this is an old school turn-based RPG, you usually die from attrition. You die from getting hit by multiple enemies across multiple fights, and you've got things like potions or healing spells with mana costs uh, that you slowly wear the player down over the course of their little adventure out into the cavern or the tower um, until finally they have to either uh, return back to town safely or you know figure out something else get a get a heal from somewhere all right so now we've got some numbers but what the heck are the formulas for these numbers so you could actually just punch this into your code in a while loop and say like you know oh, if the level's two while two or you know four zero to two uh do um you know my base player damage of 20 plus 5 times 1.2, then do that again. Uh, but that's really a very inefficient way of doing things when you could just have a formula that just does some simple math and outputs the result. And then also that formula could scale, you know, down to 20 levels or 30 levels or 40 levels and give you the same feel for the most part. So here's the trick. We are going to create a new chart. So this will default to a line chart in Google Sheets, which is actually just what we need for doing this logistic regression. So before we get into the actual regression, I'm just going to make a couple changes to the chart to make it easier to read. We're going to come over here, set our step value to 20 so we get a little better numbers here and maybe get some minor tick marks at uh, every second count. So that'll be like, what, four, one, two, three, do that. There we go. So we have four lines per 20 uh, on this chart. Just make things a little bit easier to read. We've got level going across the bottom, which is exactly what we want because level is going to be the input value for all of our formulas. Um, level you could think of as being the X value in our formula. All right. So now we're going to go over here to the series tab. And now this is the key bit. We're going to select the first uh, series, which is player health, that we want to uh, do some logistic regression on. And so we're not actually doing the logistic regression. Google Sheets is going to do that for us. So what we're really doing is we're going to say compute a trend line. And what Google Sheets is going to do behind the scenes on this trend line is they're going to perform logistic regression and then give us an output. So first we turn on trend line and then down here on label we're going to pick use equation. So you're going to see our new field appear right here. This is our new series. So you can't actually see it because it's behind this blue line because it matches perfectly. The, the, the type of the trend line is set to linear and there's several different kinds of uh, several different types that you can select here and we'll go over uh, at least four of these. Um, but linear actually matches up one to one. And just like I mentioned earlier, the formula, very simple, 25 times X plus 75. Okay, that's great. Now, if we look at the shape of these other curves, we've got this red one. This is actually, this is actually a curve. This isn't just a slope. This blue line, this is a slope. Here on the red line, we've got a curve. On the yellow line, we've got a curve. And then on the green line, we have another slope because that's enemy damage and it's based off player health. So player damage and enemy health, these are the two things of interest. So we're going to select player damage. Um, we're going to go to the series, select player damage right here, and scroll down and just do the same thing. We're going to turn on trend line there. We've got a pale red trend line down here. And you can see that linear scaling is not even close to what we want here um, because our value at level, level one which would be right over here, would actually be a negative value, and we don't need players to be healing enemies every time they hit them. And then up here by level 10, you can see that our old curve uh, has already started to outpace our slope, and so this is just going to scale much more shallow than our curve would have. So that's where these other types come into play. So exponential is uh, the first type, and you can see that this line looks honestly not too bad. 
oh, we forgot one thing. We're going to flip label to use equation. And that actually reshapes the chart a little bit so it can fit everything in here. This is actually the equation for this line that they have fit to our curve, this trend line. Um, so exponential is pretty uh, self-explanatory, I suppose. You, you have a base value, you have an exponent value, multiply that times level, and you've got your, uh, your, you got your result, your amount of player damage. Um, but we can try a few more things. Let's take a look at polynomial. So, wow, polynomial uh, actually fits this line perfectly. But for anyone out there who knows polynomials, you know that they can come with uh, any number of degrees, which is, uh, I'll probably butcher the terminology here, but it's basically like factor pairs uh, that you add on uh, to the end of your equation. So if you have a second degree polynomial, you've got a base value plus uh, some value times x plus some value times x to the second power. And then if we were to add a third degree, it would be plus some value times x to the third power and so on and so forth. And so technically you could go up to infinity here. Ex uh, Excel and Google Sheets only allow you to plot so many because it kind of gets pointless and also super confusing um, the more polynomials you have. Now, I'm actually going to crank this up. You can see here a third degree polynomial gets us a curve that pretty much fits Id identically. There's a few caveats to any of these formulas, and that is really what you want to do is instead of just going for the levels that you know you're going to have right now, you may want to plot out levels kind of before or after, like values before and after the series that you intend to use. So for example, if you know your game is going to wind up with a level cap of 20, you might want to plot out values up to level 30 or maybe even level 40. For one thing, this makes sure that your formula is going to hit the sweet spot for all the levels you care about. And then two, it makes sure that your formula is going to scale in case you need to introduce new content in the future. Maybe you're doing a DLC or an expansion or just a content patch and you want to increase the level cap, you know, to 25 or 30 or something like that. Um, so I, I recommend, we're, we're using kind of a contrived example here, just going up to level 10. I'd recommend plotting out many more levels than you think you're going to use so that everything uh, is kosher when you go to look uh, at those further on level ranges and stuff. So that's one caveat to polynomials is that basically this curve could get totally wonky after level 10. Like the curve could start going up here and then like go back down here and you know back up. That's just kind of the nature of polynomial curves. And as we add more degrees, uh, we kind of add a little bit more chaos potentially, especially if our numbers don't follow like a nice simple pattern. Like if you have kind of like a jagged curve where it kind of bumps up in power at level three because, you know, maybe the player unlocks new abilities that gives them more damage uh, and then kind of goes shallow and then bumps up. You know, the, the, the crazier your curve is, the crazier your polynomial is going to be. And the higher the amount of degrees you use, uh, the more chance for that polynomial to get whack. All right. And then one more caveat to polynomials. You can see here we've started outputting numbers in scientific notation. Don't mess this up. I actually just messed this up earlier this year on a project, and we had um, enemies appearing around mm, level 50 or something like that, and the enemies would actually have invalid health values. They had not a number, which is a, which is a special value in JavaScript that basically means like we couldn't calculate the correct number for this, so not a number. Uh, and so we had bugs with basically unkillable enemies, and that's because I messed up the scientific notation uh, when I was putting these formulas into code. And later on, we caught that uh, with the help of our QA folks. Spectacular QA group, by the way. Um, yeah, so that's just another word of caution with polynomials. Make sure that you uh, cross reference your scientific notation, that you know exactly how many zeros are supposed to be after your decimal places and things like that um, before you go wild. Okay, we've spent a lot of time on polynomials. I think it's valuable, though, 
because you don't want to make these same type of mistakes. We'll jump down to logarithmic, which is the last one we're going to look at here. And you can see logarithmic is wild. And that's because every log uh, function is going to use, uh, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a log function. And so the curves are always going to be sloped in this uh, particular sort of way. And so sometimes this is the uh, type of curve you might want if you need a diminishing return or something like that, then log might be the answer and might match up very closely with the numbers that you input. Um, but when you're talking about growth curves, curves that uh, accelerate upward as you reach higher and higher levels, usually log is not going to do the trick for you. So I tend to stick to exponential, polynomial, uh, try to get it into two, three, or four degrees, keep it as simple as possible. And another thing that you can do is you can actually just pre-compute all these values. You don't have to actually take this formula and punch it in. If you know you're only going to use 20 or 30 values, why not just take the safe approach, hard code those things, maybe throw a comment in there, you know, Oh hey, this was this these numbers were generated from this spreadsheet on this date and imported into code so that you have a little bit of a paper trail for yourself when you come back in 3 months and need to alter those values or, you know, you've made some changes to your systems and need to recompute those things. All right. So, that's pretty much it. That is how that is a technique I use for uh, shaping curves and trying to get my numbers to match up and uh, look great and get formulas that will scale to infinity if I need them to. Uh, and this has been a great help for me. Been using this t technique probably, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years since I found out about it. Um, and it's served me really well on a number of different projects. So I hope that it can do the same for you. Uh, I'd encourage you to like uh, the video comment down below if you found this technique helpful to you or if you'd like to see other videos like this more kind of educational game design content or little tip tips and tricks that have been helpful to me and then of course if you like the content please subscribe thank you for watching have a great day